It's no secret that skin color has played a huge role in history, but why do humans have different skin colors anyway? Welcome back for another episode of Anthropology in 10 or Less, your basement-based source for anthropological inquiry. I'm your host, Michael Kilman, and today we're going to delve into some biological anthropology and human variation as we explore the origin of skin color. Now, this episode will be the first of several on the subject of race. Since this is a complex topic, we're going to spend a few episodes exploring it. We'll look at both the biological components, the cultural components, and even take a look at some of the history. So why start with skin color? Well, because the truth is there's no such thing as race, at least not biologically. Race is kind of like money. It's not exactly real, but has a lot of power to shape the world. But the truth is the only reason it has any value is because we all agree it does socially. Money's only little green strips of paper. Without humans giving them value, they might just be fancy decorations or a party favor. I mean, why don't we use seashells or tree leaves or paint chips? The same is true for race. Even though it's not real, it has an extraordinary amount of power to impact people's lives. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had a reason to have the whole civil rights thing, or we wouldn't have an entire history of Jim Crow laws, slavery, or a whole bunch of other ugly stuff that was based on skin color. So in the United States, the number one factor that marks race is skin color. So today, we're going to look at the origins and evolutionary adaptations surrounding skin color. Turns out that skin color was a matter of regional survival. So there are two important things to know before we dive in. One, all humans originate in Africa. All humans, no exceptions, despite a number of recent books that make some wild claims. This really hasn't been up for debate in about 50 years. We have both the genetics and the fossil records to prove it. The question is no longer if, it's how many times human populations left Africa. And currently the prevailing theory is that there were at least five large scale migration events. Though there are a few competing theories as to the exact number. Two. Africa has more genetic diversity than any other part of the world. And if we think about this, this makes sense and is exactly what you would expect since humans got their start in Africa. The more time spent in a region, the more opportunities for genetic diversity to emerge. All right, so what causes the diversity of skin color in the first place? In other words, what is the biology behind skin color? The answer, melanin. Melanin is a brownish black pigment that affects the majority of variation in skin color. And by the way, this isn't only present in humans. The skin tones of many animals are produced by melanin. See, inside our skin are melasinites, little cells that produce the melanin. These cells have an organelle, which is basically like a factory inside the cell, called melasinomes. It's inside these melasinomes that melanin is produced. So now that we have a basic understanding of the biological processes for skin color, the next question is why? What in evolution created an advantage for light or dark skin? Well, the first thing you should know is that skin color is pretty directly related to geography. And as this map shows, there is a direct relationship between skin color and the intensity of UV radiation. This has to do with sun exposure. If your ancestors got a ton of sun, you tended to have dark skin. That's because darker skin is far more resistant to UV rays. Long-term exposure to UV rays lead to a lot more than just sunburns. It also leads to cancer and damaged sweat glands. In fact, darker skin tones can provide the equivalent protection of SPF 10 to 15 sunblock. Light skin, like mine, generally only provides about SPF 2.5 or less. Hence my pre pull get up. Also, extensive exposure to high UV radiation causes the decomposition of the B vitamin folic acid, or folate. Some scholars have suggested that this could be the primary selective factor in terms of evolution because this directly impacts pregnant women. A folate deficiency during fetal development can cause neural tube defects or birth defects that impact the spine or brain. The two most common of these are spina bifida and anencephaly, which are both debilitating syndromes and would be very tough to deal with without modern medicine. So in this case, dark skin would be a huge advantage in an era before prenatal vitamins. This all sounds good, right? Uh, given the advantage of having dark skin, why in the world would any human beings have light skin? There had to be some sort of selective pressure in order for that level of melanin to change, right? The answer, 
Vitamin D. Vitamin D is absolutely essential to healthy bone development. Without it, it can lead to rickets in children or osteomalacia in adults. And both are potentially lethal brittle bone syndromes. Low vitamin D can also lead to a higher risk of preeclampsia, a premature birth disorder, and raise the risk of gestational diabetes. Basically, the whole lesson of this episode is for you pregnant women out there to take your vitamins. So what does vitamin D have to do with skin color? Well, vitamin D isn't found in very many foods naturally and is actually pretty tough for humans to get. Most of our vitamin D is synthesized by our body via the absorption of UVB radiation from the sun. Wait, wait, I know what you're thinking. Ah, vitamin D milk does a body good, right? Here's the thing, in an article published by Allison Arwadi of Yale University in 2009 called The Use of Ricketts, Race, Technology, and the Politics of Preventive Medicine in the Early 20th Century, she demonstrated that many, if not most children living in northern cities exhibit at least of mild forms of the disease in the 1920s. A post-mortem study conducted in Dresden between 1901 and 1908 found that 96% of the infants and 90% of the children under four who came into autopsy had signs of rickets. So it was a really big problem in the early 20th century, and between 1918 and 1928, scientists discovered that the primary cause of rickets was a vitamin D deficiency. Thus, we ended up getting vitamin D fortified foods like milk, which mostly solved the issue. Now that's some good science. Back to skin color. Dark skin is far less efficient at synthesizing vitamin D because of its additional UV protection. And so again, in the days before fortified food, there was an extra selection pressure if you lived in a place with a, only a little sunlight, like, you know, cloudy Portland, Oregon, or London. Ultimately, what this just comes down to is that different skin colors have different advantages in different geographies. Again, there is no biological component for race, just regional variation to adapt to the environment. But that's all for this episode of Anthropology in 10 or Less. Uh, a quick word. If you like this show and you want to support anthropology that is accessible to the public, please consider visiting our page on Patreon and supporting us. The more support we have, the more episodes we can do. Thanks, and see you next time.